In today's video, I'm going to get your gunfights from looking like this to looking like this. Oh. Let's go! If you want to get better, there's two main focal points when it comes to gunfights. The first of which being positioning, and the second of which being mechanics. So, let's go over the first half of winning gunfights, which again is improving your positioning. Now, positioning is a very vague term with a lot of different moving parts, but to put it simply for you, positioning in Siege can be boiled down to where and how you position your actual body when taking a gunfight. First, let's go over the where part of positioning. When you hold an angle, where do you sit? Well, mainly, you want to be sitting in a place that won't expose you to two angles at once. If one of your main issues when it comes to how you die is that you get shot in the back often, then that means that you have bad positioning. You should never expose yourself to two or more angles at one time. When it comes to where you position, you also need to think about how far away you are from the angle that you're holding. There is a crucial reason for this. In the actual operator model where you get your perspective is actually in the middle of your two eyes. Some games have the camera in the forehead, on the nose, in the mouth, it doesn't matter, just know that Siege's player camera is in between the eyes. This means that even if parts of your body are visible to an enemy, that doesn't always mean that you can see them. For example, I've brought you onto Basement of Oregon with Alibi. Now let's pretend that I'm an attacker trying to push barrels, and I see the shoulder of somebody trying to swing me. Obviously, I can see all of their shoulder, but as you can see by the outline, their face is hidden. This is because they're super, super, super close to what they're swinging off of, and this happens to you often and it's why you die. It's why sometimes they can easily see you, but you can't see them and you blame it on ghosting, or you blame it on perspective glitching, when in reality, that's not even a thing. So in order to prevent this common phenomena, how do you avoid this? All you have to do is literally back up off of the angle that you're holding. For example, if I was this alibi clone, all I would have to do to negate this would be to back up off of the doorway. Now we know that things that are farther away appear smaller, and smaller targets are much harder to hit. This is also the case in Siege as well. If you back up and hold longer angles, you're naturally going to be harder to hit. Being smaller also makes you appear to be faster, making you even harder to hit. Not only this, but the further away you are from the angle, the less of your body they can see before you're able to see them, so you're reducing the amount of reaction time you give to your enemy in the gunfight to kill you. Now that we've gone over where you sit, let's go over how you sit. How do you position your body when you have found where to position it? There's many ways. Do you stand, crouch, or prone? Do you hold the left side of the doorway or the right side of the doorway? Do you hold an off angle or do you hold a long common angle? Do you even hold an angle at all or do you wait for a good time to swing just like this? All of these points fall under the how category. First, let's go over different uses between standing, crouching, and proning. Now, Siege is a one-shot headshot game, so you want to be at the level where people hit the head the least. In lower elo, people naturally have lower crosshair placement, so crouching in lower elo will actually get you headshot more often. But in higher elo, people aim head level more often, and more consistently, so crouching in the right places will actually benefit you more. Keyword though, the right places. You don't want to be crouching too much. When is it okay to crouch? Well, first of all, if they have information that you're crouched somewhere, whether it be because of drones or because they quick peeked you, then you have to stand immediately after and reposition yourself. That way, their crosshair placement is wrong and their pre-firing is wrong based off of the late information. The same goes the other way too. If they know you're standing, then crouch. Not only this, but crouching is also good to hide behind certain types of cover so that your head isn't exposed. This right here is a great example. Because as you can see, I can pretty much cross from these heddles and they won't be able to see my head, which can allow me to easily get up from an off angle and not off the reinforcement where they'd expect. Not only this, but if I'm even farther away, it makes it even harder for them to see me whenever I'm crossing. I did put these holes a little bit low, so I don't know how actually true that is, but for higher and more accurate head holes like this, you can actually crouch beneath them and they won't be able to see you. So don't look at this, <laughs> look at this instead. But you get the idea, you can crouch behind cover and come from off angles instead of an angle next to a wall where they would easily have their crosshair placed at and pre-fire you from. If you look at it from a longer perspective as well, crouching from a long angle will allow you to cross from here all the way to here without being able to be seen as opposed to you standing and you having the risk of being shot. Thirdly, crouching also benefits stealth, because crouch walking is naturally just quieter than sprinting or walking. However, I honestly recommend that you don't crouch often, because of two reasons. The first reason being that it makes a crouching noise, as you can hear here. As soon as anyone hears that crouching sound cue, they're going to know to now aim crouch level, because that's where your head is going to be. 
The second reason is that it slows you down, which is bad if you're trying to swing somebody and give them as little reaction time as possible to kill you so that you can kill them. As you can see, this is me walking. As you can see, this is me crouch walking. It's much and noticeably more slow. Now that we've talked about crouching, when do you prone? Well, the answer is honestly hardly ever, with two exceptions. The first exception is if you need to prone to get an angle like this on rafters. There's a bunch of different angles that you can use by proning that don't expose you, but also allow you to get nice little angles, so that is one exception. The second exception is, let's say that you peeked improperly, and you know, you're shooting somebody, they're on this doorway, let's say, and you're like almost out of ammo and you have to back up, and now they're swinging you and they have that swinger's advantage, then, because you're like mid-gunfight and they expect you to be standing, you can easily prone to catch them off guard and get a free kill. So proning to catch people off guard mid-gunfight, which rarely happens by the way, is another exception. Other than that though, do not go prone. It gives you way less sensitivity speed, which can throw you off. As you can see, this is me doing one full 360 with my mouse pad. This is me trying to do that exact same 360 while prone. I couldn't even do it. Now that you know when to stand, crouch, and prone though, when do you hold the left side or the right side of a doorway? Well, a general rule of thumb is if you're waiting for someone to swing, which is the only time you'd hold an angle in the first place, you want to hold the angle from the opposite side that they're swinging. If they have to swing from the right, position yourself on the left side of the door. If they go from the left, you go to the right. It's very, very simple. There's a few reasons for this. Let's say that I'm holding the angle, like I said, someone's gonna swing from the right, because that's where main stairs is, and I'm holding the left. If I'm holding this pixel peak right here and he runs across, I get the information that he runs across, because I'm still holding an angle that allows me to see a blip of him right as he runs by. But because I'm holding an angle like this, he can't really see me when he runs all the way across. Also, if he's running all the way across like this, I can choose exactly how much I want to expose myself and how much of him I want to see if I choose to actually take that gunfight. So it allows you to be able to control exactly how much you're exposing yourself and how much you're exposing them it's a very very powerful tool but if you're on the right like this holding an angle and they swing then if you want to not expose yourself you have to back up and now you're at the whims of how much they want to swing which is basing how much you need to back up so you're pretty much going at their pace instead of you forcing your pace upon them in the gunfight which is really really bad not only this, but because of the fact, not only this, but when we were peeking the left, like I said, you got that blip of information when they pass by. And if you don't want to shoot them and engage in that gunfight, you can easily disengage like that. But if we're on the right like this, it's not just a blip of information. You see them the entire way that they're running, which means they're probably at some point going to see you. Whereas if you're on the left, you get that blip of information, but because they're running by, they're not going to see you. So you can disengage and you now have information on exactly where they are, but they have no information on where you are. So making sure that you're on the opposite side of where they're running from is how you need to be holding angles. Now, when should you hold an angle or swing an angle? Well, typically this depends on what side you're on. If you're on defense like I am now, you want to hold angles like I was just doing. If you're on attack, however, then you want to be swinging angles. This is just due to the nature of the game. The attackers have to come to the defenders, which means they have to swing them in order to engage in a gunfight with them. The defenders just have to hold the bomb site, so all they have to do is hold an angle and wait for an attacker to come to them. Now, in terms of when do you hold off angles and rat corners, this is really just intuition that you have to learn in the game by playing the game. And the higher elo you go, the more useful this will be. So I'm not really going to touch on this much. Now that we've gone over where and how you position, let's go over the second half of improving and winning more gunfights. Mechanics. Now obviously you have to have gun mechanics. This is just how you play FPS games and how you play Siege. Now to break down the basics of mechanics for you, there are three pillars of mechanics. These consist of flicking, tracking, and recoil control. Flicking is how you go from one target to another and how fast you're able and accurate you're able to do so. Tracking is how consistently you're able to stay on a moving target. Recoil control is your ability to consistently control the recoil of a gun so that you don't aim above their head whenever you have more than three bullets out of your magazine. Now, all of these are easily improvable by having a set warm routine, which I've talked extensively about on this channel. Not only this, but you can, as you can see, go into the shooting range and easily practice all three of these with different shooting range modes in the third, first, and second lane. But that's not really the type of mechanics that I necessarily want to primarily go over in today's video. The one most important single-handed mechanic that you need to know whenever you're trying to improve your mechanics in winning gunfights that matters the most is quick peeking correctly. Now, how you do this varies if you have your lean keys set to toggle or hold in your settings, but it's mostly the same. Quick peeking isn't actually for what players think it is though. It's not getting kills. It's not getting pre-fires based off the information. It's actually about gathering information as a whole. 
When you quick peek, you can see through what you're peeking for a short time, allowing you to gather short term information so that the second time you peek afterward, you can commit to the swing and get a kill based off of the information you just gathered. Let me give you a quick example. Let's say instead that I'm the attacker in this scenario. I want to know if there's anybody on this door or this door, but I don't have any drones or information from my teammates. Well, instead of just swinging to look and see if anyone's here, which can get me killed, I'm going to do something called quick peeking, which essentially, okay, I'm going to peek this door. Okay, no one's there. I'm going to peek the other door. Okay, no one's there. Do you see how quick that information was? It took one second, boom, two seconds, right? And now I've cleared pretty much all of the angles and information that I need to for those two doorways. Not only this, but when you quick peek like that, you're quickly gathering the information and quickly hiding back in cover. So it poses almost no risk to you. So very high reward, but very low risk. It's something that you should definitely start doing. But now that you've gathered the information, it doesn't really matter if you've gathered the information if you don't correctly execute off of the information you gathered. So let's say I quick peek this doorway, no one's there, but I quick peek this doorway and someone is there on the left side of this doorway, which we talked about being bad. Well, now that I quick peeked here and I know someone's there, I can easily go and commit to the peek and pre-fire them because I know exactly where they are in my head. It's a memorization game, really. But let's compare that as opposed to just swinging the angle and having to react to their head being there and having to shoot based off of that reaction all in one swing, which takes much more time and exposes you a lot more than separating it with a quick peek, right? Boom, information, okay, boom, kill. As opposed to, oh, information, oh, kill, right? And because you have less reaction time when you go for that initial swing and kill, they have more reaction time. So you're putting yourself at such a high disadvantage because you're giving them triple the time to kill you while you're giving yourself triple less the time to kill them. It just doesn't make sense. So whenever you're trying to gather information because you don't have any other way of checking to see if anyone's holding an angle on you, just quick peek. Not only can it get you information, but it can help you execute off of the information that you gather. Now, learning to quick peek like that is very important, but an additional tip that can even help you quick peek better is that you can change the level at which you quick peek at. If you quick peek and someone sees you do it, they will pre-fire where they saw your head. So for example, if I quick peek this, a good player that's holding this doorway is going to see me quick peek the doorway. So he's gonna think, okay, the next time he peeks, I'm just gonna pre-fire exactly head level because that's where he quick peeked. If you wanna counter this though, all you have to do is quick peek one level and quick peek a different level. So if I quick peek standing, then I'm going to quick peek and commit crouching. That way he can't pre-fire my head. The same goes vice versa. If I'm quick peeking crouched, then I'm going to stand and then pre-fire so that he can't pre-fire my crouched head and get a free headshot kill off of me. Because like I said earlier, this game is a one-shot headshot game, which is very important when it comes to mastering any mechanics or game sense in the game. Now, which of the two should you do? Should you quick peek standing or quick peek crouching? Well, here's the issue. You never really should quick peek crouching and then go into standing. You should never do that. Because one, when you quick peek like that, your quick peeks are slower, right? So people can shoot you. And then two, if you quick peek crouched, they're going to aim and pre-fire crouch level. It doesn't even matter if you're standing. Because yes, they won't get the headshot on you if you re-peek standing, but they'll shoot you in the body. So you'll still take damage and you might even still die to people with a really high rate of fire weapon. So if you're going to change levels at all, you want to start off standing and then end up crouching. That way they miss you entirely and you get the initial speed off of the quick peek whenever you're trying to gather information as fast as possible. Now, at this point, you should be a lot better at taking your gunfights, and therefore winning gunfights, winning more rounds, and inherently winning more games, and inherently getting a higher rank that you so desire, which is kind of the whole reason you checked out this video. That being said, you should check out my next video, which will get you just as good at the game. My name's Alka, and check it out. Later.